Hey guys, Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna to be checking out Android Auto on the Raspberry Pi 4 using Crankshaft. So let's get started. Now, a couple of years ago, I released a video for Android Auto onto the Raspberry Pi 3. And at the same time, Crankshaft was also on its infancy. It was just starting to come out. It was a really cool software that you could install on top of the Raspberry Pi 3. Now, it's been a couple of years since I checked out their software and man, have they changed a lot. Originally, you were only able to install the software onto the Raspberry Pi 3 and it'll actually come up saying, hey, plug your phone in. But now they actually have a full menu and everything and then Android Auto will pop in and out. Now, why I'm doing this is recently I purchased a project card, which is Impreza WRX. I bought it from a buddy of mine and I plan to work on it and restore it back to almost stock. And as you can see from the photos, uh, it's definitely seen its fair share of dings and dents. Since it lives in New York City, this is very, very common. So I do plan to get that all fixed up. Mechanically, everything is sound because I know my friend maintained it. The time belt was done. All the work was done. Clutch has been replaced. I know that the car was well maintained. So I'm not too worried about that part, but the outside, definitely I need to work on. But one of the things that I wanted to change right away or almost instantly was the radio because I was using a very old radio that didn't even have Bluetooth support. So that was one of the things I wanted to change. And my mistake, I actually bought a really cheap radio from Amazon and that was probably the worst decision I made on this thing. While I just wanted a basic radio with Android Auto, this way I could sync my phone, answer calls, and also use the Google Maps, I tried to find this radio that was about $140 or something like that and install it. First, they say it was doubled in, it didn't fit. Second, uh, you can't use the radio functions and Android Auto functions at the same time. And Bluetooth does not work when Android Auto is plugged in. When your Android Auto is plugged in, the phone doesn't work. So it is a big mess of stuff, but I could deal with a lot of those issues. One of the things I couldn't deal with is even though I have my phone plugged in, it will still discharge my phone. It's not strong enough to charge my phone while I'm using it. So I couldn't take that. So here we are. My plan is to fully build my own custom system for the WRX. Now I plan to do a lot of car project videos, but I'm not sure if I should upload it to this channel or my Nova Spirit TV channel, because since I don't do a lot of car stuff on here, I might just upload it there. Let me know what you guys think down below. Now this screen you see right here is actually just a template for what it's gonna look like. I am not gonna be using this screen because this is a screen from 2005, which is almost 16 years old. And I've used this on my Scion TC project during my car PC projects. And here's a couple of images there. And yes, I used to run this with, with Windows XP. While this screen itself is made for automobiles, it's got the bracket built into it. It's also got uh, reverse cameras, 12 volt input, uh, auto dim and all this other stuff. The screen itself is pretty dated. So that's why I want to replace this whole thing and use something that I could get that supports Raspberry Pi natively, like maybe a wave share or another seven inch type screen. So I will actually be doing a full video on the full build on this whole radio system with amps, 3D printing the bracket, everything that I need to do. But as a placeholder, I'm putting this crankshaft video first. All right, so heading over to your desktop, uh, just navigate over to this website called getcrankshaft.com and then you can go to download crankshaft. Now, if you wanna support the software, he does have a Patreon, so by all means. Now, once you go to download crankshaft, it's actually gonna bring you over to his GitHub. And if you scroll down a little bit, it, you will have the file right over here. Now, this is as of 2021, February 9th, and there is a zip file. Download that zip file. And this is what we need to copy over to the SD card. And basically this is what we need to use to image. Don't just image the zip file itself. You do have to extract the image file that is actually inside, which is the 2.8 image file or else it won't copy over. So I'm just gonna drag this over to, let me switch the icon over, over here. Let that extract. And then I'm gonna pull up my imager. At this time, once I'm done with uh, extracting the file, I go over to choose OS and I'm still waiting. Oh, there you go. Uh, use custom and bring over the IMG file or the image file itself. Choose the storage. I'm gonna be using a 32 gigabyte SD card and it's fine to actually run this entire operating system on the SD because it will actually lock it down and turn it into only read only mode. So even if you reboot or anything, it will be able to survive those reboots. Since the file is only about 2.8 gigabytes, it does take some time to copy over to the SD card, about maybe five minutes or so. So we'll just let this run. All 
Okay, now that everything is copied over, what I just did was uh, unplug and replug the SD card back in just to show you con some configurations. Now in here, you could actually go into crankshaft. There's a folder here. This is the only folder that actually all the settings would be saved in. And that's why when you change settings in crankshaft, it does uh, stay persistent because of this folder. Everything else on the root FS will actually be read only. So you won't destroy your operating system or anything and it will survive all the reboots. So in here, uh, if you take a look at crankshaft.sh and open up the text editor, you can adjust some of the stuff. Like there's uh, GPIO enabled, dev mode if you want to get SSH. And if you go down a little bit more, you could actually uh, hook up your Wi-Fi. So if you are using this as Wi-Fi and you want to copy files over or something like that, you could actually put in your information here and Crankshaft will connect through Wi-Fi. And that's basically other stuff that you could set up through here. Uh, again, check out his GitHub and I have all the descriptions for everything here, that like brightness and everything. So here we have a GPIO keyboard. And this is where you have the pinout. So if you got pin 12 and pin 13, and you actually want to put buttons on the actual screen itself to go volume up or volume down, this is where you set it up. And I love how this, how intuitive it is to get everything on because when I'm creating this for my vehicle, I'm actually going to have a knob to do the volume, have probably some buttons for brightness or to dim the screen, certain stuff that I want to put here. And this is where you would configure it in the GPIO. Now, once everything is done, uh, we're just going to eject this and pop it into our Raspberry Pi and show you how it looks. So what it's going to do is actually reboot a couple of times, resize the file system. So just let this run for the first time. It will take a little bit before it actually brings you up to the dashboard itself. Now I am not going to be filming this directly off the screen because it's very hard to see. So I'm actually just going to do HDMI capture to show you guys how it would look like. All right. So here we have the default screen. Now, usually it's made for a lot lower resolution and I'm using like a pretty big resolution. That's why all the font is really small, but this is the best way to kind of capture it for you guys. Like I was saying, originally this does not have all these buttons this crankshaft was just a quick menu where you could just plug in your phone and that's about it you couldn't adjust anything so you actually have like day and nighttime mode uh, you could actually change settings certain features you want enabled or disabled uh, you could also have an equalizer that you could change back. You could even go back to the previous mode where this is the original look of it, uh, I think last year, before they changed to this new look. And ultimately they made Crankshaft a lot better, especially now that you actually have some sort of configuration. You could change the backgrounds, you could change the uh, uh, settings you want. And I, I ultimately liked this new version. Um, I do have to play around with it a little bit after I get into a car. Also keep in mind, if I was to plug Android Auto into this, mouse doesn't work. Uh, so you would actually need a touch screen itself. But yeah, setting up Crankshaft was super easy. Um, it's just copying over the image, let it reboot a couple of times. And if you need to change some configuration files, you just go into a boot folder. Now this is how it would look on an actual screen. So you can see the font a little bit better. And again, this is not the best screen to do this on. And this is how Android Auto would look on a screen that's small too. If you guys have the opportunity, I would definitely give it a try and see if you guys enjoy using this as an actual radio for your setup. There are some things that doesn't work with this yet, which is radio. I don't know how to get FM radio to work on this yet. There are some talks on it on the issue board. I didn't really read into it, but maybe there is a way to get it in. I don't know yet. So as far as the touchscreen on this guy, I really couldn't demo it because the touchscreen is so old. I had to install custom drivers just to get it to even work on touch, but the rotation is wrong. So I'm, I'm not about to figure that out. I'm going to re be replacing this anyway. So that's why I haven't showed any real demos of this moving back and forth. Well, that is it for me guys. Now, there is also another operating system for Raspberry Pi to do Android Auto called Open Auto. And that's something you actually have to pay $29 for. And it's something I do want to check out. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so you know when that video is going to be out. Anyway, as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.